You know what you're listening to? You're listening to the Dean Team bringing the light of Islam right into your hearts. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney Radio Program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. You are listening to the Dean Team. You've joined me as your host, Amazan Abu Zuluf, and with me I have our beloved Sheikh, Sheikh Araf Shaker. Sheikh, how are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, well, Sheikh, it's a pleasure to have you um, as usual. We've had the pleasure of having you before, and inshallah, we have you many more times to come. Um, Sheikh, we, uh, as we find ourselves in this uh, last third, inshallah, of Ramadan, um, you know, we've made a, we've made a habit of referring to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he mentions the three components or the three phases of Ramadan, yeah. um, in which he says to, to more or less a degree that the beginning of it is mercy, rahmah, the middle of it is uh, forgiveness, and uh, the last part of it, or the th- last third of it, is Itkun min nar which is roughly translated, Sheikh, to salvation from the hellfire, yes? Yeah. So, uh, subhanAllah, you know, this, this in itself requires a whole lesson on its own. Um, but what I wanted to concentrate with you, Sheikh, on is the, this last component, Itkun min nar We all know, you know, we've spoken before about what uh, the concept of mercy, Allah's mercy, and how great and infinite it is. We sp- we've spoken about Allah Azza wa Jal's forgiveness, and again, how great and, and infinite that is. Um, but I think this third part, um, although on the face of it it sounds very straightforward, when you dig a bit deeper, a lot of people probably have a bit of a problem understanding the concept of um, salvation from the hellfire. So I was hoping, Sheikh, that we could speak a little bit about this topic to give ourselves a bit more of a, 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 a some classical knowledge and a, a more of an appreciation of this blessing and bounty that Allah Azza wa Jal is actually giving us in this part of Ramadan. Yeah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad al Mabawati rahmatan al Alameen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa azwajihi al Tayyibin al Tahirin wa ala kulli mastinna bisnatihi wa ahtada bi hadi al Yawm al Deen wa salam wa salam al Kathiran wa ma ma baad Allahumma la alma lana illa ma alamtana inna kant al Alim al Hakim Allahumma alimna wa yanfa'una wa anfa'na bi ma alamtana wa jalna fi talbi al Alameen laka min khulusin Allahumma inna nahmuduk ala ala anna ka balakhtan Ramadan Allahumma jalna fi hadha shahar min ibadika al Mu'taqeen من النار ومن عبادك المرضيين ومن عبادك المخلصين وتقبل منا إنك أنت الجواد الكريم. Probably the first commentary is that the title itself, العتق من النار. The word عتق in the Arabic language refers to freedom, being freed from slavery. Subhanallah. And that's why the word عتق itself it can refer to being enslaved. Right. Now, and that's why in fiqh there is a, a chapter that talks about Bab al-Atq, okay, the slavery chapter, which talks about the root, the rulings that relate to this, and the virtues for freeing someone from slavery, liberating someone from slavery. Right. Why it's interesting when, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, inspires and reveals to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to use these specific uh, expressions in describing being saved from the hellfire, it is very, very interesting. Is very very noteworthy. Why? Because it gives you the no- notion of liberation, Subhanallah. liberation from the hellfire, as if what happens to the person that enters the hellfire is that he becomes a slave for eternal punishment in that particular place, and him being left out or being saved from it, it's as if you have brought him from uh, or you have released him from the chains of slavery into the wideness of liberation, Subhanallah, and in, and therefore. Part of the abudiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that it liberates you from slavery to the punishment, which is al-atqu min al-nar. Subhanallah, that's a very um, interesting um, detail, Shaykh, because it actually makes a lot of sense. You know, you are, like you said, atqu means it gives the uh, connotation of being enslaved to something or chained to something almost, yes. right? So this this last part or, you know, this part of Ramadan is actually your chance to be you know freed from this enslavement yeah. subhanallah and, and this is something that is used in the Arabic language that's why uh, even in, in the Quran talks about okay, to free a, if you translate this literally it means to free a neck 
Okay, how would you free a neck? You won't. But because the concept of slavery in general amongst the humans is associated with someone being chained from his neck, meaning he has no control over his life. His his whole affair because if you grab someone from his neck, you control him. You that's immobilize it. him, yeah. Exactly. So so that's why I say at Quraqaba because in the Arabic language this symbolizes you being not in control of your affairs anymore. Right. Your affairs being in the hands of someone else. Yes. He, and that's why your master, he can buy you, he can sell you, he can do whatever he wants to you. So you lose that, that liberation of your actions. So when you talk about Adqab you have been liberated from that confinement, yeah. from that punishment. And now you are free. You're free, what? You're free to enjoy the pleasure of Allah. You're free to, to enjoy the luxury of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the wideness of, of Jannah, and the, the, the beauty of, of being in, 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 the, in paradise and in the Firdaus al-A'la. So, so therefore, Itself, when you mention the word atq, it's as if now I'm free. It gives you that pleasure, that sensation that you know I'm not under the control of anyone anymore. And probably that's what the hadith wants to give you the impression of. When you are safe from the hellfire, it's like you walking out from slavery into being free. That feeling. It's like being imprisoned and then being liberated to live your life however you want. And to enjoy the beauty of life. And that is the concept of Al-Atqu min al-Nar Being liberated from the hellfire And the, what is interesting is that This concept has been mentioned uh, Often in a number of ahadith from the Rasul So not just this one No, no not just this one In fact there is more authentic ahadith Where consistently the Rasul Sallallahu have mentioned the, the bounty of Allah Subh'ana Where someone is freed from the hellfire and the hadith itself, not this hadith, the hadith that talk about being liberated from the hellfire. In the month of Ramadan, there's around five different companions that have narrated it. One of them is Abu Huraira, one of them is Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, one of them is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And has been mentioned in a number of the books of, of hadith, like Muslim Imam Ahmad and other books of hadith as well. And, and, and one that is uh, usually used by the ulama, often quoted, إِنَّ لِلَّهِ عُتَقَاءُ مِنَ النَّارِ فِي كُلِّ لَيْلَ yeah. Now, verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees the people that Allah will liberate, liberate them from the punishment of the hellfire in every single night of Ramadan. So, not and just the last thing. No, not just the last thing. This is good news. Yeah. In every single night, there are people that Allah will liberate from the hellfire. Each one of them will have an answered supplication. supplication. And that's why this hadith is narrated in, in Musnad al-Imam Ahmad في كل يوم وليلة Another hadith narrated by Abdullah uh, Abu Mas'ud رضي الله عنه He mentions لله تعالى في كل فطر عند كل فطر at the, at the moment of breaking the fast كل ليلة Every night وتقاء من النار People that he frees from the hellfire The hadith of Abdullah Abu Mas'ud mentions 60,000 every night 60,000 Every single night that Allah will actually bless him with being freed or liberated from the hellfire. And then it continues that and at the end of the month, at the end of the month, the equal number of all of them will be freed. And it's 60,000 times about 30 or times about 29. Right. That similar number will be freed on, uh, in the end of, of, of Ramadan on the day of, of Fitr. And this hadith is Hassan. Imam Mundiri, when he spoke about it, he said in this hadith, Hassan, because Imam Bayhaqi is one that mentions it in Shahab al-Iman, he says this hadith is hasan li ghayri, meaning you can use it to complement other ahadith. And that's why we can use it to complement the, the other ahadith narrated by Abu Sa'id and narrated by Abu Huraira, where the Rasul Sallallahu has said that every single night someone will be liberated. Subhanallah. But the question is, who will be liberated out of, out of all the people that are fasting? Who are the ones that will be liberated on every single night? Subhanallah. And, 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 that's why, and that's why your actions will have to shine. Yes, your actions will have to shine. Your fasting will have to shine. Why should you be given that that, that immunity badge, if you want to call it, yeah. you know, being liberated from from the hellfire? Of course, the concept of fasting itself is a salvation from the hellfire. But what comes before the fasting is sincerity. Right. The hadith of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The one who says La ilaha illallah, in which by saying La ilaha illallah, he seeks the 
uh, forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he seeks the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will actually Allah will prohibit him on the hellfire. So the notion here is, is, is you can say, is swapped. Usually a human is prohibited from doing an action. Yep. And either you obey or don't obey. But when Allah prohibits something on the hellfire, do you think it's going to obey or disobey? Obey, it's going to obey, 100%. Yeah. 100%. So when the Rasulullah says, حَرَّمَهُ اللَّهَ عَلَى النَّارِ That he will be, will be prohibited on the hellfire to come next to him. SubhanAllah. Or to harm him. Hadith al-Bukhari. So here, the ulama say, what is the, what is the distinguishment of saying La ilaha illallah? The munafiq can say La ilaha illallah. Mm. Okay, even someone that is open, a, a major sinner can say La ilaha illallah. He says, يَبْتَغِي بِهَا وَجْهَ اللَّهِ he sees it seeking the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ulama that say this word in Yabtaghi biha wa refers to ikhlas, refers to sincerity in saying la ilaha illallah. He's not saying it for people to say, wallah, he's someone is a worshipper. He's not saying it because of nifaq. He's not saying it just to please someone that is in front of him or to convince him that he's a Muslim. He's saying it to actually please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rabbi, I'm seeking your reward by actually saying that statement. If it is said in such a way, it actually will save someone from the hellfire. Subhanallah. As Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu have, have, have narrated it. And if it is sincere, then it will capture the heart. Because we don't do something sincerely out of our heart except when we really believe in it. Yep. And therefore, if you really are sincere in La ilaha illallah, then it will have to uh, uh, manifest in your actions. Example, mothers, they love their children. And if you ask any mother, it says, yeah, I love my children. But what is the sign of the love of the mother? Her care of the children. Her sacrifice. Her sacrifice for the children. Her rearing of the children. If these elements are not there, would we describe that mother as a true mother? No, absolutely no. not. Tayyib, if, if I am a person of la ilaha illallah, if, I'm not impl- if, if it is not shining or manifesting it in my actions, am I really sincere in saying this word? And that's why... The ulama, they say, there are signs for your sincerity. And probably that's one of the things that, you know, uh, that will benefit me and benefit the brothers and the sisters, is that you can evaluate your own ikhlas. And the ulama say, there are two signs of that. First one, at fi ta'a. You find yourself active and willing to engage in the, acts of, in the acts of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because if you are sincere in saying la ilaha illallah, then you want and you want to please Allah, then you'll do everything that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you'll find yourself active. You don't you don't find that others will have to drag you or motivate you to do what you have to do. You'll find yourself going to it. And the shot of ta. Yeah. And the second point that the ulama the ulama they mentioned, Al Hirsu Allah illallah. Like a keenness on that no one sees these actions of you except Allah. So that is an indication of your sincerity in the actions that you do. Meaning, I'm not waiting for people to see me to pray the sunnah that I have to pray. I'm not waiting for people to see me to pray my fard on time. I'm not waiting for people to see me to pray the taraweeh or to do the fasting. In fact, I have the reverse feeling. You should have first the feeling of wanting to worship Allah and looking for it. And we're going to come to examples of that. Second, a keenness on people not knowing about you. It's like this becomes your, tre- your precious treasure. SubhanAllah. The jewels they want to keep away from people from seeing. I read a quote once, Sheikh. Uh, it was a it was a quote from one of the pious predecessors, I believe, where he said that sincerity is when you hide your good deeds, like you like you hide your bad deeds, hmm. something along those lines. Yeah, and yeah. and and Din Nun Masri, one of the pious uh, 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 scholars or worshippers, I should say, he was asked when would someone reach the rank the rank of the Mukhlisin. Yeah. He said, when you exert all effort in your worship, when you exert all your effort in your worship, and you would not like people to raise your status in their eyes. And you do not want people to look at you differently, you know, or distinguish you. In fact, you, wanna, you want people to not know about you. You want to be hidden, as yeah. they say. These are signs of, you can say, the perfection of the sincerity in the heart of that person. If you capture this, this by itself, by itself, in your fasting, in Ramadan, will distinguish you from everyone else. You know, that, 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 that shyness. Yeah. That, that presence of sincerity that is in, in, in the heart. And then you'll find your nafs itself following with you in doing the acts of worship that you want to do. And, that, and that's where um, we start. 
That's why Abdul Jawzi, may Allah miss upon him, he says, and and before that, that's why one of the titles of Abu Bakr who was Atiq. Atiq means liberated. Right. Because the Rasul said to him, Anta Atiqullah min nar. So you are the one that Allah freed from the hellfire. So the word Atiq is itself a positive title in Islam. And one of the first people that was given that was, was Abu Bakr mm-hmm. by the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anta Atiqullah min nar. Taib, then if I know how can I be freed, then look at the personality of Abu Bakr. If we are look about, if we're looking at human level sort of comparison, comparisons, yeah. okay, look at how Abu Bakr was, and then you know the criterion, or the criteria that you should meet if you want to be from the Ataqa, from from the Hellfire, and that's why Ibn Jawzi, his commentary that I'm about to mention, yep. re- completely reflects how Abu Bakr was. He goes, and may Allah bless people that will not uh, 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 accept for themselves from the actions of. Uh, of nobility and virtuous one but they seek every one of it and they look for every avenue of alm and they look for every avenue of good action and they work towards it and they strive for it and whenever their bodies will be too weak to reach what they seek their intentions will become their representative why is why is why is Ibn Jawsi saying here of course the saying is in a very eloquent way He's saying that the attitude of the mukhlis is that he's not looking for one and he takes it. No, he's greedy. Mm. He wants to grab all of them. Yeah. Whenever he sees some alam, he flies to it. Whenever he sees a virtuous action in a particular area, he hunts it and he looks for it. And when he actually, when he becomes incapable of doing all actions, and that is the nature of the humans. That's why the Rasulullah tells us, well, you will not be able to do all the righteous yeah. actions then his intention will become his representative. Meaning, uh, if I had more time, what I have done this? So he'll be if rewarded. I had more money. And so, then, yes. Exactly so this like is that. where, because I've, I've always wondered, Sheikh, when you talk about the concept of ikhlas and niya, they do go hand in hand, right? So this is an illustration of how they do actually go hand yes. in hand, subhanAllah. And, and, and that's what you should feel. You know, like when they said to you, are you, if you are fit, then your heart rate should be between this and that. Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, if you want to know the, how healthy your, your, your sincerity is, these are the benchmarks that you, that you set for yourself. Okay? Activeness in the actions of worship. Uh, uh, look at greed in, in, in seeking all the virtuous actions that you can do. Exerting all effort. Hiding it from the eyes of the people, from the knowledge of the people. And not seeking the status. Or, you know, I'm distinguished, I'm special, look at me. I'm a hafiz, I'm a sheikh, I'm this, I'm that. Okay? Making sure that you want to raise your ranks in the eyes of the people. And uh, 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 also, uh, uh, when your actions, when your time does not allow you, when your body does not allow you to capture everything, then you make sure that you capture it by your intention. You make sure that you capture it by intention. And I was able to do that. If I had time, I would have done this. And I would have done that. I would have finished the Quran 20 times, مثلا. Yeah. Okay? And I would have prayed uh, 60, 60 rak'at. And if I had money, I would have fed full and I would have had food and I would then your intention becomes what? Hmm. Active. But not when, not when you sit down and do nothing. No. You do all the effort you exert. And when you can't reach what is beyond your hands, yep. you make your intentions. Yeah, if, I had, if I were like this, I would get that. And therefore, as Ibn Jawzi is saying, that will capture for you some of the hasanat of the action that is, um, that is done. Subhanallah. So that is, that is one. Now, when you come to the fasting, fix up your fasting. Perfect your fasting. Of course, we always say to the people, fix up your fasting, perfect your fasting. But how do I do that? The Rasul says, and that's when we, when we are looking, because everyone satisfies um, abstaining from food and drink and from sexual intercourse. Most of the people that really want to fast abstain, uh, um, satisfy that. But what you need to satisfy, in fact, is beyond that. This is just the, the, base, the basic requirements. The base. yeah. yeah, and that's why the ulama, majority of the ulama say, your fast is accepted if you fulfill that. But some of the ulama of the past said no. Really? One of them, Imam al is he's the one that, you know, he was different than others. He said no. If you don't abstain from others, I would not believe, I would not deem your fasting to be valid. accepted, Subhanallah. to be valid. And that's why he takes, he takes other hadith of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi You know, the one who does not leave the, uh, the qawl uh, al the uh, falsehood uh, words. We're going to talk about some of them. And acting upon it, uh, and jahl, and, and foolishness. 
فليس فليس لله حاجه في ان يدع طعامه وشرابه لان الله از نوت نيد اوف هيم ابستيننج فروم هيز فود اند هيز درينك يعني ان واي از ذا حديث از سيجنيفاينج ذا حديث از سينج ذا ايم اوف ذا فاستينج از تو تشينج ذيس ان يو not to you for you to stop from the from eating and drinking yeah these have their benefits yeah. but this is not the ultimate aim mm. the ultimate aim is to change this what is qawlu dhur alama said backbiting lying slandering anything that is evil in the in, in the types of words that you say what is amal dhur any action that is any sinful action that someone can do uh, cheating like some people cheat in ramadan yeah You know, we're not going to mention <laughs> particular trades, but some people, you know, when they become popular, they start cheating in Ramadan because yeah. they want to sell more. What are you doing? Mm. Right? Allah is not in need of you abstaining from your food and your drink. You have lost, you have just lost being from those who are liberated. Okay, lying, uh, 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 deceiving people. All these actions, Al-Amal Bazur, as the Rasul have mentioned, should not do. But what is interesting, and what I find interesting, is that the Rasul said, Wal Jahl. And Jahl, the ulama said, being, uh, being stupid, foolishness. Foolishness? Yes, foolishness. And that's why Jabir radiallahu anhu, and I love this statement, and I always like to remember it. From the Sahaba, he says, if you are fasting, then your sight should fast with you. And your ears should fast with you. And your heart should fast with you. And when you appear, you should appear like there is peacefulness, there is serenity and peacefulness on you. وعليكم فليكم اذا كان يوم يوم صومكم فليكم عليكم الوقار فليكن عليكم الوقار والسكينة should look peaceful feel peaceful and feel a state of serenity and then he says a beautiful and he ends it with this he says and make sure that the day of your fasting is not similar to your day of your fitr ولا يكون يوم صومكم كيوم فطركم meaning what meaning look at yourself each, each one of us knows himself Okay, how am I in a normal day? Write down. Masala, I angry, I get angry fast. Okay. <laughs> you know, I uh, abuse some people. طيب. I cut off on people on the road. Masala. You got a bad attitude. You know, I got a bad attitude. No patience. Yeah, know yourself. You know, you know yourself. You know, I, I let I let few, you know, few, few eyes here and there. You know, I cheat a bit. You know yourself. We're not going to talk, I'm not going to here talk about an ideal person. No, no. Realistically, we, we're not all perfect in how we are. Write them. List them. And make sure that when you are fasting, all these are, are unticked. That's when you all know that your fasting has been perfected. Um. So when people look at you and say, Okay, Arif, you're different. You look different. You're not getting angry fast. And that's when your fasting will actually will be beginning to become the perfect fasting that the Rasulullah has described as a sawmu junnatun yusajannu biha aninnar. The fasting is like a shield. Behind which you save or you protect yourself from the hellfire. The hellfire. What, is distinct, what I love about fasting between me and you is that it is a secret that exists between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, see, see how close fasting is with sincerity? Very, very close. Because sincerity, no one knows it. Mm. It's in your heart. No one will ever know whether you, are, whether you are sincere or not. It's something that is between you and Allah. That's what the ulama used to say. The munafiqeen used to stand... In the rows behind the Rasul Sallallahu Next to the best of the people Which are the companions yes. Who knew? No one knew The Sahaba did not know about them And fasting is a secret between you and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala But if you want to perfect it Do what, it, what Jabir The advice of Jabir Your sight Your hearing So no music on that day No backbiting Don't waste your time by talking to people That's a mistake A lot of brothers I've seen A lot of sisters And you know, even we fall into it And we should always pick ourselves up We're not talking about others, even ourselves Okay, you don't have time to kill You have time to gain in Ramadan mm. So then sit down, oh on the phone Oh you see Fulanwa has done You know, have you seen that? If you watch TV every day for example This should stop If you want to perfect your fasting mm. At least this should be reduced In your fasting you should be a different person Than when you are in normal life That is an element that will shine will differentiate you between the regular fasters. This will become the, the, the fasting of the khawas. You know, the, the fasting of those who are special and the elite. And these are the ones that can shine, and, you know, and they can be nominated to being from those that Allah would, would, would liberate from the hellfire. Sheikh, this is obviously everyone's um, uh, main goal is to be of those people that, um, yeah. that actually get uh, liberated from the hellfire. And it's actually... It's um, 
very interesting how you've explained that, Sheikh, because even myself I understand in words the context of being, you know, having salvation and being liberated, but to actually understand the components that make that up, and particularly sincerity and the action that follow with that sincerity, you know, it all sort of fits together now. We know that, you know, fasting is prescribed upon us, لَعَلَّكُمْ yeah. تَتَّقُونَ And that taqwa is built up through becoming conscious of the things that you're doing so. and the fact that you're either earning Allah's pleasure or His anger. So it's very interesting, you know, how, how it all fits together. That's why the Rasul says in another hadith, رُبَّ صَعْمٍ لَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ صَوْمِهِ إِلَّا الْجُوعَ You know, there are people who fast, but the only thing they gain from their fasting is their hunger. SubhanAllah. Meaning what? Meaning that the aim behind fasting truly is not just hunger. Hunger is a step to something that is much, much bigger. Yeah. And this is the change in your whole being. You know, and, and you know, if you maintain that, and especially now talking about the last 10 days, uh, uh, the, the Salaf used to, used to make ghusl for the last 10 days. Allah. Every single day of it, they used to make ghusl for that day. And, and now we're talking about perfecting and you know, taking on board that now, you know what, I'm entering into a totally different phase where you are leaving your ibadat that you are doing. And Ramadan is in fact, it's not a month of alim, it's a month of ibadah. It's a month of implementation of the alim that you have, that you yeah. have, you have learned. And if you want to waste it here and there, then you can. But then what you are doing, you are losing the fruit of Ramadan. You are like someone that grabs a banana, eats the, 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 skin. the skin and leaves the group. <laughs> Sheikh, um, and you think, and you think, oh, you know, that tastes good. Well, brother, you know, my brother, my no sister, idea. even though I'm talking about myself, Yanni, but you have no idea what you are missing. You have just eaten the skin and you have left the core. And that's why the Ramadan, and that's why the Sahaba used to miss Ramadan. Why Mazen? Because the Sahaba are always keen on being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you enter, in, when you enter into that worship mode, you be feel closeness. You feel closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why when it ends and they have to go back to the normal routine life, they hate that. Why? Because they enjoy the joy of that closeness with Allah subhanahu wa yes. ta'ala. Yeah. Because this will not go uh, unnoticed. No, no, this will have an impact on your actual nafs. That's why the Sahaba, when they were around the Rasul, they will feel different. Why? A man goes up. Yeah. A man goes up. And that's what should happen to us in Ramadan. You should feel that I am a better person. And that is one of the any main points. But I don't want to spend all the time talking about this. There's other actions that you can do that can help you on, on that particular path and that the Rasul have mentioned. Especially to the youth. Because our program does, to, does target the youth. Yeah. Wallahi, the youth are the luckiest people on the face of the earth. You know, I've just made an oath. SubhanAllah. Because when you are young, of course, and you are single, you have all the time in life. You have all the time in the life. Once you get married, you start working. Khalas, your time, your, your time, your time is taken. The free time, they, and, and you know, we know that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Kids and commitment and, and work and khalas, your time is occupied. When you are young, you have no responsibilities. So therefore, you can definitely dedicate a can, larger portion of your time to exactly, yeah, exactly, and you can do a lot of things that others will envy you for, or would wish for them to do. For example, when the Rasul says, Sallam. "Whoever prays, Masallallahi Arba'ina, Yawman fi Jama'ah, the one who prays to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, forty days every salah of that day he prays in a in a, in a Jama'ah. Yudriku takbirat al He makes it the first takbira. Allah will grant him two things." Okay, he will be given granted two two certificates if I want to say. First one, liberation from hypocrisy. Second one, liberation from the hellfire. Now you're young. What do you have? You have nothing. Ensure that every salah that you make, you make it in a jama'ah. And you make it in the first row. For forty days at least. You'll be given that granted. You, you know, that certificate. Liberated from the hellfire and liberated from Baratum in innocence mm. from that. You can no longer be accused of that. Um. Innocence from the hellfire and innocence from uh, uh, from Nifaq. And you know, even with the project that, that you guys, may Allah reward you, have started, which is to open up a masjid in, in the city, the brothers that work, they can even do that to a particular extent. Ensure, set your time, fix your schedule. That you take time out, you know exactly when the jama'ah is held, 
and get down and and and, and make it in in, in, the, in the in the masjid of the city, and then later on, for example, when you come back home, Maghrib, Isha, Fajr, if you if you can work on that for forty days, or even when you take your holiday from work, for example, or so I know for a fact that some brothers in the month of Ramadan are not working. Mm. I know at least a couple of brothers who are not working. Well, if you're not working, don't spend the day sleeping. Don't spend the day sleeping. Wallah, it's a loss spending the day sleeping. And we are in winter. I know in the Arab countries now, they, they are fasting 16 hours. And they're not sleeping. No, no, we're just fasting, you know, probably around 8, 9 hours. Barely. And what are you doing? Sleeping? You know, those who sleep do not enter Jannah. Those who work, and even in life, those who sleep, do they earn money? No. Those who work are those who uh-huh. earn. So don't waste your time sleeping. Tayyip, make sure that every single salah you pray in the actual jama'ah. Take Ramadan and then after that continue that for, 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 for the period that you did it for 40 days and you have been guaranteed that. And that's why from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the mercy of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that it gives you more than one avenue to the destination that you want. Objective, liberation from the hellfire you'll find that you'll give him more than one avenue. Some avenues are shorter, some avenues are longer. It depends on how good your efforts are to get what you want. Another one, the Rasul ﷺ said, لَنْ يَجَنَّارُ أَحَدٌ صَلَّى قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِهَا The one who will not enter the, the hellfire, who? Someone that prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the sunset and before the sunrise. And here the hadith is referring to adhering to the two salawat, salat al-fajr, and Salat al Asr. And Asr, okay. Yes. Before sunrise, meaning Fajr, before sunset is Asr. Asr. And that's why the Alimat said the hadith refers to Salat al Fajr and Salat al Asr. That you always ensure that you pray them how? You pray them on time. Fellow Waqt, this can guarantee you that you will not enter the hellfire. They pray on time. What else? You pray the Sunan associated with them. So the hadith of the Rasul when he okay. says the two rakat of the Fajr. Mm. Is better than the dunya what it contains. Yep. You do that. Always make sure they pray the sunnah to rak'at uh, before the fajr and then you pray the fajr. The fajr. Okay, and the asr, the hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Beautiful hadith of Rasul Sallallahu in the books of Sunnah. May Allah have mercy upon someone that prays before asr for rak'at. You know what I like about this hadith? Is that the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes a dua. Or the one that prays the four rak'at. And dua of what? And dua of mercy. Mm. And dua of mercy. So if you can maintain that, then you can stand, Ya Rabbi, you said, yeah. <laughs> Ya Rasul said, that whoever prays always, Asr and Fajr, and I have, I've, I've committed to them. You know, I pray them on time, all the time, no matter what happens. I never, I never uh, miss them. You know, I pray them on time, and I pray the sunnah that I associate with them. Free me from the hellfire. Another hadith is hadith that refers to the sunan before dhuhr and after dhuhr. Where the Rasul says, Man hafadha, or man yuhafidhu, ala arba raka'atin qabla dhuhri, wa arba'in ba'daha, haramahu Allah ala nar. Or kama qala Rasul The one who prays four raka'at before dhuhr, and four raka'at after dhuhr, Allah will prohibit him, again, see the wording, haramahu Allah ala nar. Allah will prohibit him on the hellfire. So 12 rakat all up. But, so the, but what does the hadith say? Man yuhafidhu, the one who consistently preserves. Right. Maintains that. Maintains that, that. Maintains that practice. So that is a set salah for you. When it comes to dhuhr, there's always four rakat before, and then dhuhr, and then four rakat after. After. You know, and, and these are from, you know, from the action that can, that can help you with that. But an easier one, crying from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Crying from the fear of Allah. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi says, لا يلجو النار رجل بكى من خشية الله حتى يعود اللبن في الدرع. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi says, that a man that has cried from the fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, from the reverence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, will not enter the hellfire until milk would return to the other. And that is impossible. Especially, especially in the time of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Once you milk, it can't go back in. can't go back. And that's a way of the Rasul Sallallahu saying that if you are someone that cries from the fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala then you will not enter the hellfire. And it's irrevocable. Irrevocable. <laughs> irrevocable. The hadith continues and says what? And the, the uh, dust of someone 
the dust of fighting in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the smoke of the hellfire will never coexist in the nose of a Muslim ever. Subhanallah. Meaning either this or that. Either that or that. Or either or that. And if this is guaranteed, then this will not take place ever. So the hadith is beautiful. The hadith taught and it gives you two options. One that relates to the actions of the heart and one that relates to the physical actions. And the actions of the heart is... In. So therefore, you see the mercy of, of, the, of, of Islam widens it for you. If you can't do the latter, you can do the former. You have no excuse in leaving the actual former. And that's why in another hadith of Rasulullah he says, there's nothing more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than two drops and two marks. Let's say, Habba Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala A drop of a tea cried from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a drop of blood that is sacrificed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The two qatratan. And the atharan, the two marks, a mark caused by striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a mark caused by adhering to some of the worships of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These two components, drops and marks, are the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's fine because it shows the sacrifice. And yeah. So imagine you come on the day, and of course, this does not mean, for example, that you know you bang your head on the, yeah. <laughs> the concrete to get the mark. No. That what is that? What is the hadith talking about? That closeness and love to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa taala, which leads to consistency in what you do. That's why Khalid Ma'dan, and and that's why another hadith. You are under the shed of Allah, and you see all this hadith we're talking about, just about crying for the sake of Allah. Look how many rewards has Allah associated with them? Why? Because they are so so great. So how can I get myself to cry from the fear of Allah or from the reverence of Allah subhanahu wa taala? Listen to the Qur'an. Read the Qur'an. You will find yourself crying without you even attempting to. That's why the alama say, listen to the Qur'an, attending the raweeh, attending the qiyam, attending dua, you'll find yourself doing that. And then, you know, and that's why the alama they say, what washes the heart from the sins are the tears of the eyes. And that's why, it's, that's why the, tears are, the tears of khashya are significant. They actually, they wash the heart from the sins. Khad ibn Ma'dan, he says, he says, and one tea from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can extinguish seas of fire. They extinguish oceans and seas from the hellfire. Khad ibn Ma'dan is from the Tabi'een, and Khad ibn Ma'dan is a man that has, his, he's a scholar in hadith, by the way, a very renowned scholar in hadith, and also a person that is known for, for worship. And he continues and says, And the tea that will run on the cheek of the person from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of that tea, the whole face will not see the hellfire. And this person will be written. That's what, and he's saying what he has learned and what he thinks that will happen from fearing, from crying from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, And that this person, he will be written in the Mal al ala by his name, in the name of his father, and Allah will fill his heart with light. SubhanAllah, Shaykh, it does sound like, and you've just touched it upon a few of these um, uh, ways of um, of actually attaining this salvation from the hellfire. And, you know, it's it's beautiful that we're able to um, tie it to the fact that, you know, we find ourselves in this last part of Ramadan. Yeah. Um, you know, the the attachment to Qur'an, um, inshallah, if, if we haven't worked on it yet, it's not too late yet. You know, we still have time to make the most out of it. Have that connection, you know, seeking the last, you know, in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, seeking Laylatul Qadr, um, the dua within those nights, especially Laylatul Qadr, is, um, you know, again, these represent uh, opportunity to yeah. earn um, the pleasure of Allah. The Quran, and, and, and some of us take the time off. So, for example, if you take the time off, then you make sure that you're, you, when you come to Dhuhr, you pray, you know, in the last 10 days, you pray. The sunan of every single salah, you look for them, and you set them, especially for Satul Dhuhr now that we mentioned, yep. especially for Asr and, and, and for Fajr, you make time for the Qur'an, because I know some brothers and sisters, may Allah reward them, they do you know, uh, put time aside for that. Yep. They make sure that this is something that you enlist, you make sure on your list. I'll mention one more thing, inshallah ta'ala, and, and then if you want, inshallah, we can end the, the, the lesson with it. There's others, by the way, is that the Rasul says, مَنْ كَانَ هَيِّنًا لَيِّنًا قَرِيبًا حَرَّمَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى النَّارِ Whoever is easy, soft, and close, meaning close to the people, 
Allah will prohibit him on the hellfire. But that's why Imam Manawi he says, and therefore it's not a surprise to see how the Rasul was with the companions. Subhanallah. You know, you look at him, hayin, easy. Does not make things hard. He makes him easy. Easy. Soft. He's not harsh in the way he deals with people. Qariban. He's close to those who are around him. You know, people do not get scared and run away from him. Hayin and layin and qariban. Allah will make him haram on the hellfire. Subhanallah. And, that's, and it goes, and then now you look at the Rasul, you find him like this. He will flow with the companions. Even when it comes to some decisions like in the war decision. In Uhud, for example. Hmm. We find that the Rasul Sallallahu went with him. You know, whenever there's an option, an easy option, we find that Rasul Sallallahu goes for it. Not an easy option like concessions or a tricking, a trick, trying to trick away from the worship. No. In whatever makes it easy for the people to run or to deal with them. Yeah. That's how the Rasul Sallallahu was. So if you remember that hadith, we go back to the first point that we mentioned how the Siyam should be. It makes sense. Yes. You know, that you become easy, you become soft, you become approachable. Okay, uh, 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 and you, uh, and therefore, uh, your akhlaq are good, then you are, you become prepared on the hellfire. Haram Allah. SubhanAllah. Shaykh, um, it's been an absolute pleasure having you with us. And, um, you know, as we, as we always say, having, talking about these topics, um, especially something as important and as vast as the mercy of Allah and His ability to save us from the hellfire, we are by no means doing this any justice, this topic. Um, but, uh, you know, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal um, for all of us to, for Allah to save us from the hellfire, for Amen. us to be amongst those that on each night, on each iftar, that we are of those, you know, 60,000 that, um, uh, that are freed from the hellfire. That are freed from the hellfire. Liberated. And liberated, subhanAllah. And we have a right upon the people now, you know, Subhanallah. If we have taught them that, then we have a right upon them to make the dua for us like they make dua for themselves. Inshallah. So there you have it, uh, brothers and sisters. A uh, uh, special request for, for you guys to make dua for us, inshallah, especially in these last 10 days of this blessed month of Ramadan. Um, unfortunately, this is all we have time for today. And uh, we've really had a, a great time speaking to you. Um, until next time, you've been listening to the Dean Team. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney Radio Program and subscribe to our YouTube channel Dean Team Sydney